final bosses are by far my favorite thing in video games. They are not only epic, but they also conclude your adventure. They are the final challenge. They test all of your skills and sometimes they even have other amazing aspects like good music, good design and even some emotion here and there. After this generic introduction, I will show you my personal 15 favorite video game final bosses. Read the title closely, this is a top 15 favorite final bosses, not the best ones, so this is a very personal list. Please don't be a bitch and complain if you see a boss you don't like on here. Oh, and of course, I will follow the classic countdown protocol with one final boss per series and only from games that I play. Also, warning, spoilers are all over the place here. This is a final bosses list after all. Having said all that, let's begin. If there is a game I think deserves having more recognition in the countdown community, is Bully Canis Canem Edit, Rockstar's version of a high school student's life. Trust me, even if the concept sounds weird, Bully is a complete masterpiece, with memorable characters, fantastic music and interesting story. Having said that, let me introduce you to the main villain and one of my most hated video game characters, Gary. No, not, not that Gary, Gary Smith! At the beginning of the game, this douchebag will befriend your character, Shimmy, trying to convince him that together they will rule the school. At one point of the game, he betrays you and starts screwing up everything and saying it was your fault so everyone on the school starts hating on you. In the game's final chapter, he will start a war in the academy and he becomes crazy for power, so it's up to you now to stop this monster, and the fight itself did not disappoint. The final battle begins at the top of Bullworth Academy main building. You will follow Gary while he tries to stop you by throwing stuff at you. This first phase, while it's nothing special, is challenging on its own right, and it only builds up the atmosphere for the final showdown. Later, after a cutscene in which we discover Gary is only crazy as shit, they start the fight in some platforms on the side of the building. Ok, maybe this part is extremely easy, since he fights just like every random student on the school, but you're beating the crap out of that asshole! It just feels so good! It will be also note the amazing atmosphere this battle has. There is a storm in the background and an amazing song called The Final Showdown sounds as well. It all says we are not messing around. This ends here. Overall, the final battle from Bully, even if it's pathetically easy and simple, it's atmospheric and just downright satisfying. And to think, this is only number 15 on the list. Ah, Super Smash Brothers! How much I love this amazing series of original fighting games, and with the original fighting system we get some very original boss fights. But which one is on the list? No, it's not taboo, maybe he's too cheap for me, and I've never played through Millie's campaign so no Giga Bowser. Well, it's simple, the number 14 spot is for an enemy from the past, the Master Hand. Ok, maybe this giant club has nothing special at first sight, but do you know what I'm talking about if you play this battle? Nobody was expecting this to be the final boss of the game's lame story mode, but it was a great conclusion for it. As a giant hunt, HAL Laboratory used this concept perfectly, with some very original attacks like punching, attacking with his fingers, or shooting bullets. They are freaking geniuses, what else could we expect from the creators of Kirby? It should be also noted that this battle also has great atmosphere, with that strange background and epic music. The Master Hunt has an amazing fight, and for all that, he deserves this spot. Oh, the Mario series, famous for its symbolism for the video game industry and addictive gameplay. However, these series are not famous for its boss fights. Oh yeah, there are some good ones in the RPG department, but hey, I've never played a Mario RPG. Yet. So I just had to choose a final battle from the main series. 
Originally, I was going to pick the nostalgic and amazing Ultimate Koopa, but then I faced another incredible boss from this series, and I knew I had to put it on the list. That's right, in this spot we have the amazing Bowser Battle from Super Mario World. Not only this is an excellent ending for an excellent game, but it's also very atmospheric, with the storm in the background and intense music. Hmm, storms tend to make a good atmosphere, right? Eh, it doesn't matter. It should be also noted that the gameplay is amazing and challenging. While driving in his clown copter, the King Koopa will throw giant balls, flames and even stomp around in order to kill Mario. To defeat him, he will have to pick up some of his mechanic minions and throw them to his head. Doesn't sound too hard, right? Trust me, it is. In conclusion, the battle against Bowser in Mario World is atmospheric, epic and just very, very fun. Sadly, it's often forgotten by gamers, and that's just very sad. Oh, Zero Two! Well, that boss is amazing, but it has been surpassed by others in the most recent Kirby games. Oh yeah, that's an awesome final battle! Complete, epic and just downright incredible! Too bad I've never played Return to Dreamland. Fuck yeah, Marks! If you watch my top 10 favorite video game villains list, you would know that I love to hate this little bastard. He betrayed Kirby in a way nobody expected, and the battle against him was incredibly satisfying. But in Super Star Ultra, he revives because of Nova's remains, and he transforms into the even creepier Mark's soul, who is way more powerful and challenging than the normal Marks. His design is crazy as shit, just like his variety of great attacks. Not only this battle is satisfying and challenging, but it's very, very creepy, especially once you have killed Mark's souls. If there is something you probably don't know about me, it's that I absolutely adore the Donkey Kong Country series. They have smooth gameplay, comfortable controls, amazing graphic, and just beautiful music. Oh, and they are hard games. Very, very hard games. However, just like the Mario series, it's not famous for having good bosses, with the obvious exception of its final battles. I was going to have the original K. Rule battle from the first Donkey Kong Country on here, but it couldn't beat the amazing final boss from the second game. At number 11 we have the fight against Captain K. Rule. Yeah, that bastard has a tendency to change his name and appearance all the time. In this battle, he will use a giant shotgun that shoots cannonballs to defeat Diddy and Dixie. But that's just the beginning. When he has low life, he will start using different attacks, like becoming invisible, transporting himself, and even shooting a freezing beam, and a slowing beam, and a confusing beam. Trust me, just like the rest of the series, this fight is challenging and crazy as hell, and it will kick your ass! The battle against Captain K. Rule is challenging, and it also has some amazing music behind it. The theme itself, called Crocodile Cacophony, is one of my favorite boss themes ever, and it's sadly overshadowed by Gangplant Galeon. God bless you, Rabbit Luigi, for knowing which track is better. War of the Monsters. You know how much I love this underrated masterpiece? Okay, maybe I already talked too much about it, so let's just say that this game means the same to me as Locke's Quest means to Ichio Noble. As I said in my Versus rant, even if it's the same for every character, the story mode is very fun the first time you play it, and it's home for some amazing bosses. Well, they are only three, but they are still very fun to play, with my favorite being the final one, the leader of the alien invasion and the destructor of planets, Cerebulon. This epic brawl is divided in three epic phases. In the first one, Cerebulon will be inside his UFO mechanic robot, so you can't harm him normally, 
You will have to hide behind the stone pillars and wait until he uses his powerful laser. After a while, he will have to recharge, leaving him open for attacks. After a few hits, he will come out of the robot as a mechanic octopus. During this phase, he can only be damaged by throwing the parts of his destroyed mecha at him. Trust me, this is very entertaining and satisfying. BAM! In the face! <laughs> <coughs> and in the final phase, he will come out of the octopus and show his true ugly face. This is the final showdown. No questions asked, it's you against Revolon, and you will have to kick his ass! In conclusion, the final battle against him is really, really fun and very complete. A great way to close such a shitty story mode, kinda like Master Hunt. And let's not forget that after the battle, a little insect comes out of his corpse and escapes, leaving us with a cliffhanger! Dun, dun, dun! The final battle against Liquid Ocelot in Metal Gear Solid 4 is considered by many to be the best final boss of all time, and I can't blame them. Everything about it is perfect, it concludes the story of the series perfectly, it has great gameplay and just an amazing selection of music. But there is a problem. I've never played Guns of the Patriots, so we'll have to look at the amazing final fight from a Snake Eater against the boss. Metal Gear Solid 3 introduced us to a woman simply known as the boss. She was Big Boss's mentor and a mother figure to him. She was very loyal to the USA and one of the country's most powerful soldiers. Until she defected and started working for Bulgin and the Russians. So Snake's new mission was to destroy the nuclear tank known as the Shagohot and to also kill the boss, which was a very difficult task since she is his teacher. After the amazing destruction of the nuclear weapon, Snake meets with the boss where she reveals that she was the daughter of one of the Patriots, and that made her suffer a lot through her life especially when they took her son, later revealed to be Ocelot. After the long monologue, the battle itself begins, and it's very, very good. You will fight the boss in a field full of white petals, and she will hide in them. You will have to pay attention to her movements and avoid her gunfire. She can also come out of nowhere, kick your ass and break your gun. This is a challenging fight, but that's perfect because you are fighting against your master, the one who taught you everything you know, and when you defeat her, you feel like the student finally became better than the teacher. However, the conclusion is very depressing. She will be there on the floor, telling the snake to finally kill her so her suffering finally ceases, and the game will force you into pressing the square button and shoot her. Trust me, I was in tears when I had to do that. Kojima, you are a crazy bastard! After that, the petals will become red and Snake will escape with Eva. After a sexy night, she will leave a message revealing that the boss never betrayed the United States. She was working as a double agent, so people didn't know they were involved in the war against Russia. This is one of the best endings ever made, and it feels very satisfying after such an amazing final battle. The boss, you will always be remembered as a true patriot. Ah, Pokémon, my favorite franchise of all time. When it comes to final bosses, we have to talk about the champions. You know, the ultimate and most powerful trainers of your region. After beating the entire lead four, you will have to face him or her, and these fights never disappoint. It was really hard for me to choose just one champion. We have the annoying bastard Gary Oak, the badass Lance, the smooth and interesting Steven, the weird Alder, and the happy Iris. All those characters are awesome final bosses, but at the end, it was a no-brainer for me. My favorite champion is none other than Cynthia from the Sinnoh region. The build-up to her battle is done just like most Pokémon games. You will meet Cynthia a couple of times during your adventure, and she will help you out without you knowing who the hell she is. After beating the amazing Sinnoh Lead 4, you meet her in the final room, and reveals she is the champion. Holy shit! And after this build-up, the battle was just as awesome as her. First of all, this fight is very challenging, just as every final boss should be. This is mainly because she has an excellent variety of excellent Pokémon, the unexpected Spiritomb, the badass Lucario, the cute and useful Togekiss, and of course, my favorite Pokémon of all time, Garchomp. Yeah, that is her main weapon in her team, and I truly understand why. Let's not forget her amazing battle team, that is one of my favorite Pokémon songs. Overall, Cynthia is truly show why she was worthy of the champion title, with a challenging battle, epic music, and an interesting team. Oh, and let's not forget that she is hot as hell!